Good afternoon and welcome to our celebration of service. I'm Ron Barnes and it's an honor to be the president of this wonderful Rotary Club. I do have a couple thoughts for the day. One is, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving and a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend. It was The weather was reasonably good and um, we all survived and we are back and that's wonderful. Uh, the other thought for the day is, there is no there's a no greater thing that you can do with your life and with your work than follow your passions in a way that serves the world and you, Richard Branson. Kind of fits in with what we're talking about today in our exciting program about the Peace Corps. And to further this thought, we have a reflection on world peace and a call to action. So David Wright, if you'll join me for the inspirational reflection today. Our, our theme in Rotary this year challenges us to create hope in the world. When the president of Rotary International introduced that theme earlier this year, he called on members to lead the way toward possible possibilities far beyond our current expectations. Mm -hmm. And in his speech, he especially focused on peace, a goal Rotary has pursued for over 100 years. So for today's reflection, we are going to explore our own expectations in answer to that call and see if we can raise them. So let's go all in and begin with a question. By a show of hands, how many agree with the statement, there will always be war? So let's take a moment to let that sink in. Because even among those like us who have it as a goal for our organization, there's still that nagging doubt that history has taught us that it is a peculiarly, wickedly difficult question. And outside those doors over there, most view world peace as a pipe dream, an impractical goal. So what do we do in the face of a goal viewed by most as utterly impractical? How do we bring them hope when they roll their eyes at the very goal itself? I wondered that very question until I stumbled upon a letter from Wilbur Wright, no relation, to Octave Chanute in the year 1900, when he faced a similar doubt about the impossibility of human flight. It said, dear sir, for some years, I have been afflicted with the belief that flight is possible to man. My disease has increased in severity, and I feel that it will soon cost me an increased amount of money, if not my life. I have been trying to arrange my affairs in such a way that I can devote my entire time for a few months to experiment in this field. Reading the letter, I realized the answer. To create hope, we need to think like those who create for a living, inventors. Take Thomas Edison. Like Rotary, he too had a mission. A lifelong one he described as I find out what the world needs, then I go ahead and invent it. You see what's special about inventors like Wright and Edison is that when they see an unachievable goal, they don't see it as a sign of a dead end, but as a beacon calling them to invent a way to make it achievable. In other words, their approach is to invent a way to make the pra impractical practical. Thomas Edison had another uh, quote that makes us realize how inventors were unique. A sentiment that president of Rotary International also expressed that it is important to build on the momentum of initiatives begun by past leaders. He described it as, I start where the last man left off. In other words, inventors don't view past failures as indications of hopelessness, but as clues to get them closer to their goals, a ladder of success. So with that in mind, let's build the momentum by reminding ourselves of a time when world peace was not the pipe dream of hippies and protesters, but was the declared mission of the United States government and leaders around the world. 
When Woodrow Wilson promised of World War I, this is a war to end all wars. He won the Nobel Peace Prize for being the leading architect behind the League of Nations. When FDR declared of World War II, the work, my friends, is peace. More than an end to war, an end to the beginnings of all wars. He became the leading architect of the United Nations. When General George Marshall declared, war is the most terrible tragedy of the human race. He became the leading architect of the Marshall Plan, one that transformed Nazi Germany from one of our greatest enemies into one of our greatest allies. When Eleanor Roosevelt declared, it isn't enough to talk about peace. One must believe in it. And it isn't enough to believe in it. One must work at it. She became the leading architect of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights when she chaired that committee at the United Nations. When Douglas MacArthur declared, efforts have been made to distort my position. It has been said in effect that I was a warmonger. Nothing could be further from the truth. I know war as few other men now living know it. And nothing to me is more revolting I have long advocated its complete abolition. He was the leading architect of Japan's transformation from a ruthless enemy into a leading democratic and economic ally when he was its interim administration administrator after the war. And when JFK declared, mankind must put an end to war or war will put an end to mankind. He became a leading architect of the Peace Corps an effort to encourage Americans to help humanity across the world as a way to build goodwill, friendships, and peace. An organization we are going to hear to, or hear from today. All of these people had one thing in common. They all took ownership of the cause for world peace. And now on a personal note, like Wilbur Wright, I too have been taken with an affliction a disbelief in the notion that peace is not possible. And to that end, I have dedicated several years to a book I'm going to publish and a modern movement I hope to launch sometime in the next few months. Which brings me to one of the most magical coincidences I have ever encountered. Up until a, up until a few weeks ago, I knew of all these efforts and quotes. They were already part of my book. What I did not know until I began working on this speech, and what has left me wholeheartedly convinced that I made the right choice in joining all of you, is that every single one of the people in this reflection today was a Rotarian. Edison, Woodrow Wilson, FDR, George Marshall, Douglas MacArthur, JFK, all Rotarians. Now, except for Eleanor, but she was a Rotary Ann before there were Rotary Andes. Oh, and Wilbur Wright, who was the Rotarian, <laughs> was not a Rotarian, but his brother Orville was. I think we can all agree that's close enough. All of these people that helped create hope for world peace were Rotarians or closely related to every single one. Which brings me to me you know, to my favorite and final quote. Speaking of Orville Wright, he had his own doubts. No flying machine will ever fly from New York to Paris. That seems to me to be impossible. Just 20 years after making that assertion, he had to eat his words as he escorted Charles Lindbergh to receive an award for doing just that. When he flew from New York to Paris in a flight that took 33 and a half hours, over 2,000 times longer than the first flight at Kitty Hawk just 25 years before. 40 years after that, Neil Armstrong became, became the first man to set foot on the moon. And you're not going to believe this, but Charles Lindbergh and Neil Armstrong, they were Rotarians too. So let's keep creating hope for world peace. If we can find a way to build on the efforts of these great Rotarians of the past, it might just be closer than we think. But if history is any guide, 
It literally is up to us. Thank you, David. And to introduce our guest today, Kyla Cox Decker. Hello, fellow Rotarians. Uh, we have a few guests with us today. Uh, if you are a guest with us, when I announce your name, if you'll please stand so that we can recognize you. Uh, Tracy Jovanovich has two guests today, Kim Gray, who is a former Rotarian. Welcome, Kim. And Vicki Runyon. And then guest of our speaker today is Anna Georgina Caraco, uh, and is here as a Rotarian from the Philippines. Anna? Joy, do you have any guests on Zoom? Hi, Kyla. Hello, everyone. There are just a group of happy Rotarians today. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, I hope uh, as guests that you join us again. And if you'd like any more information about Rotary, I'm sure you can find a Rotarian who can give you that information. Thanks. Thanks, Kyla. We have no birthdays this week, but we have several Rotary anniversaries. Kay Leach started Rotary in on the 12th of December in 1988, so 35 years. Brian Price started 12-1-1990, 33 years. Uh, and Jimmy Torrey, four years, started in, in 2019. So I saw Jimmy here, so congratulations, Jimmy. And Scott Walter, Walters, 35 years. He also started in 1988. We have some announcements. Uh, talking to Steve Moberly, we still need two people uh, to sign up for the Salvation Army bell ringing. So Steve is here. So uh, he's not going to let you out the door until you sign up. So uh, please, please help Steve. The other thing is the holiday party is December 7th. And basically, you need to see Natalie today because we have to tell the country club this is going to be a great party at the country club, a sit down dinner. We have musical entertainment from the School of Music. So it's going to be a great festive holiday party. So I encourage you to sign up. Also, as everybody else has told you via email and everything else today, this is Giving Tuesday. And uh, Rotary Foundation wants me to remind you that this is Giving Tuesday. So you shall be reminded again. The other thing is that on December 9th, Tyler is going to have his master's recital at 4 p.m. in our hall. And I encourage our Rotary Club in support of Tyler to be there. If you can't make that one on December 5th at 7 p.m., he's having a rehearsal and he wants your support to help him with the rehearsal. So please join me in um, helping Tyler get through his um, master's recital. And it'll be great. Rumor has it the white smoke went up the chimney and I'd like the nomination committee to come up and talk about their efforts. Hi, everyone. We're the three most immediate past presidents of this club, Ashley Wesley, Sally Gaskell, and Alon Barker. Together, we form the nominating committee for the coming year, which starts July 1st, 2024. We are extremely excited today to announce our president-elect, who will become president for the club beginning July 1st, 2024. Now, this person's father formerly served as a president of our club, which I think is a first. Our new president will be Tracy Shindell Joanovich. <laughs> she may be one of the better dressed presidents we'll ever have. <laughs> we also we also have up to four board positions to fill beginning July 1st, 2024. 
So we'd like to ask each one of you as a member of this club to consider serving on our club's board of directors. This would be for a two year term. The job involves attending monthly lunch meetings. It is a free lunch and just basically providing the important oversight that a board of director provides to our organization. Thank you. And if you're interested in, in leading the club as president in the future, we hope that many of you are, especially these incredible, youthful new members that have come on. It's strongly advised that you first serve on the board because being on the board gets you to know about the organization in ways that really help you as president of us. So please contact any three of us if you'd like, if you have any interest in being a member of the board of directors to begin July 24. And we will be reminding you about that again sometime soon. Any questions? Any questions? Anybody with any questions? Well, please help me uh, congratulating Tracy once again. Okay. And the wonderful thing about being president, the past presidents of this club are always there for support. So Tracy, you will have a lot of support and help as you take on your leadership role. Now to call Tracy and her membership committee team forward, we have a great installation of the Chamber of Commerce of Bloomington. All right, first I wanna just say thank you to David Wright, a brand new member up here and doing a reflection right out of the gate. And it was very well done. So love to see that, love to see new members jumping in hands on. So very excited today to welcome Stacy Bruce as a member of the Chamber, uh, Bloomington Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Stacy's a dedicated professional and community leader currently serving as the Director of Member Services at the Chamber of Commerce. Born and raised in Bloomington, Stacy's deep-rooted connection to her community has been a guiding force throughout her life. She's married to Michael Bruce and has one daughter, Mira Mae Bruce, who is currently a freshman at Bloomington North High School. Her role as a mother has further enriched her understanding of the community's needs, motivating her to engage in various initiatives that make Bloomington a better place for families like her own. Stacy is deeply involved with Tri Kappa and has served on the board of directors for the Boys and Girls Clubs of Bloomington. Professionally, she is a member of various organizations, including the Building Associates of South Central Indiana, Monroe County Apartment Association, the BEDC, and BNI Business Network International. Her engagement with these groups reflect her dedication to fostering economic growth and business development in the Bloomington area. Stacy has a deep sense of community and a genuine desire to make a difference. You're gonna blend in very well here, I might say. Her numerous contributions to Bloomington, both as a professional and as a philanthropic leader, continue to have a lasting and positive impact on the community that she calls home. Erin, if you would do the honors. Stacy Bruce, representing the Bloomington Chamber of Commerce on behalf of the board, and membership of the Bloomington Rotary Club, it is a great pleasure to welcome you and your organization as the newest member of our club. We look forward to the fellowship that we will share, as well as your participation in club projects that make our club, community, country, and world a better place. Though Rotary is not a political organization, Rotarians are vitally concerned with good citizenship and the election of effective leaders to public office. While Rotary is not a religious organization, it is built on those highest principles that have served as a moral compass for people throughout the ages. Rotary is an organization of business, professional, and community leaders pledged to uphold the highest ethical and moral standards. Rotarians believe that worldwide fellowship and peace can be achieved when people work together and uphold the Rotary motto of service above self. Rotary activities exemplify the partnership, respect, and generosity that one would expect from people who believe they have a responsibility to help others. Stacy, you are a representative of your vocation and talents within our club and community. 
You have now become an ambassador of Bloomington Rotary, carrying the ideals of service to all within your sphere of influence. Our community will know and judge Rotary by your character and service. We'll also look to you for inspiration as we strive to become better Rotarians. We will now pin you with the distinguishing badge of a Rotarian, your Rotary pin. We ask that you wear your Rotary pin with pride in your many endeavors and as a symbol of our recognition of your contribution towards a better world through Rotary membership. Fellow Rotarians, please rise if you're able and welcome the newest Rotarians, Stacy Bruce, representing the Bloomington Chamber of Commerce. Thank you. No, thank you. And some pictures. I can get you here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Congratulations. Welcome to the club. And also, uh, our Rotary Club now is also a member of the Bloomington Chamber of Commerce. So it's a reciprocal agreement. At this point, I would like to introduce, reintroduce Tracy, president elect, <laughs> to introduce our program today. All right. Thank you, Ron. So uh, Lindsay Malachi was born, raised, and has resettled in Indiana. After graduating with a degree in international studies from Wittenberg University in Ohio, she dedicated the first few years of her public service career to supporting U.S. exporters and to economic development projects in Morgan County, Indiana. Lindsay then served for two years as a Peace Corps volunteer in Kosovo's community economic development sector, a life-defining journey. During the pandemic, she worked in field operations for the U.S. Small Business Administration before returning to Peace Corps as the Indiana-based recruiter with the professional mission of inspiring college grads, career changers, and retirees to serve. Rumor has it she's been pretty successful too. Lindsay and her husband are new Rotarians with the Rotary Club of Indianapolis. Please join me in welcoming Lindsay to tell us about peace and how Rotary and the Peace Corps work together. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm Lindsay Malici, and we're gonna start with a little video today. Are you looking for more in this world? Are you ready to be part of something bigger? Then we are looking for you. The big hearted, the bold, the messy and the gutsy, the teachers, the growers, the builders, the skilled, the sharers, the change makers. We need you. We are the Peace Corps. In more than 60 countries, we go all in and go all out. We are volunteers, partners, communities, working together, living together, bringing our experience, passion, and joy to building a better world together. We are powered by connection. We're driven by purpose. We join hands to make a difference. We open our arms, our hearts, our doors, our minds. We learn more, give more. We share freely and serve boldly. Are you ready to tackle the tough stuff? Learn more than we teach. Plant ideas and grow wise. To go the distance to make a difference. Then we have a place where you belong. Join us, the Peace Corps, going the distance to make a difference. 
Yeah, I heard somebody say that's nice. I agree. I just love that. Uh, you know, whether you are motivated by teaching English, teaching guitar, uh, working on farming in a sustainable manner, or sitting on the sofa with the community ladies having tea, I truly believe that there is something for everyone in the Peace Corps and different ways that we can serve. Um, and I love the overlap with Rotary Service Above Self. So I think it's just a natural fit for me to be here today. Um, so I am a new Rotarian with the club in Indianapolis, um, but it's great here to be here today with you on the Indiana University Bloomington campus, where my grandpa studied opera, where my dad studied business, my aunt studied education. And then I went off to a little liberal arts school, but that's okay too. I'm still a Hoosier. And I've been a Hoosier uh, for most of my life. And, um, but I'm also one of almost a quarter million return Peace Corps volunteers. I served in Kosovo, which is in Eastern Europe in the former Yugoslavia from 2016 to 2018. I come from an economic development background and served in that sector there. Um, and as we would say in Kosovo, Persendetia, uh, which is hello in Albanian or Stravo, hello in Serbian. I was in a Serbian community for two years, and I married an Albanian, so I had a really great experience, you could say. And our mission is pretty sweet and simple. It's uh, world peace and friendship. So I don't know, David, if there will always be war, but I view our, our responsibility is just to point the needle in that direction. And I have personally seen, as well as other return volunteers in the room here have seen, as long as we are pushing the needle in that direction and making impacts on individual levels, hopefully that grows to the community level and reverberates even broader and really does have an impact in people's lives. And so um, we accomplish that mission through supporting our host communities with skills transfers. So we're teaching teachers, training trainers, um, but we're also going to exchange culture. So to talk about American culture in all its diverse forms, and to share our host country culture back with Americans. I think that really does promote understanding and a uh, global mindset and uh, produces global leaders. These sector areas for the Peace Corps might look somewhat familiar. What does it remind you of, anybody? The Rotary areas of focus. Um, so I think that's why um, there's so much interest and in, like this renewed energy to see more collaboration between Rotary and the Peace Corps. Um, so I was a community economic development volunteer, but we have so many opportunities for volunteers working in uh, public health, education, uh, sustainable agriculture, environmental awareness. Um, and that really does overlap with Rotary's areas of focus. Um, so March 15th, 2020, we had almost 7,400 volunteers in 60 countries. March 23rd, 2020, we had zero volunteers in zero countries. So we are working back. We're in over 50 countries again already, um, but it has been a rebuilding process. But um, Peace Corps does have a choice model. So if there is a particular country that interests an American volunteer, they can apply directly to go to one of those countries, or they can submit a general application to serve where needed most. And then our placement team can match up their skills, interests, and preferences with what is currently available. So right now we are recruiting 60 different positions for the two-year Peace Corps volunteer program. Uh, so a lot of opportunity already, even though it's uh, not that long since that we've been back in the field. A little bit about my community economic development projects in Kosovo. I started out um, working with an NGO, basically a non-governmental organization or a nonprofit whose mission was peace and tolerance. And uh, so the, the main project that I supported with the organization and recruitment was to uh, find high school students from different ethnic backgrounds to basically come together and interact, which they don't often get the opportunity to do so. And so we had Serbians, we had Serbs, uh, we had Albanians, we had Turks. So we had all of these different high school students um, who might not have ever met, um, don't always speak the same uh, native language. And so I think uh, 
just by spending time together, getting to know each other, getting to hang out is a, a neat and unique opportunity um, for them. And the guy in the white t-shirt, uh, Drin Krasnichi from Kosovo, went on to go to Harvard. And so he's graduated from Harvard now, really impressive dude. And, um, you know, as you're getting to know people in your community, sometimes they reach out to you and want your help on different projects. So Mladen there in my Serbian host community was uh, um, involved in a lot of different projects as I'm sure many Rotarians are, but uh, one of his hats was uh, president of a startup beekeeping association. He was a second generation beekeeper in Kosovo and saw a need to train the next generation of beekeepers and also some business opportunities for different uh, individual beekeepers in Kosovo to kind of co-op together, sell honey under that same label there to, you know, increase brand recognition and create less work for each individual beekeepers. So um, I was happy to kind of serve in an advisory role for, for that project. But other volunteers in community economic development in Kosovo at the same time as me were working on film festivals, environmental cleanup, women's empowerment. So um, you know, it does require a little tolerance of ambiguity because for the, you know, general two-year program, you might not know exactly what is in store for you, what lies ahead. It's all based on community needs. It's uh, community-led. It's not volunteer-centric. Um, and as one of the only native English speakers in my community, there was a lot of demand to teach English. And so I was happy to find creative ways to engage not only elementary school students by playing games, uh, teaching English through music and art, um, but also with adults um, who participated in a creative writing competition. And uh, Milos there on the top left side won first place for the creative writing competition in Kosovo and second place internationally. So it was definitely a highlight for me to see him succeed in that way. So we are building back and are currently in 57 countries and 53 posts, some posts incorporate two countries like Albania and Montenegro is one post, two different countries and 2,400 volunteers. So not quite back to that 7,000 plus that we were in in March, 2020, um, but that's kind of what I would like your help with. Um, did you know that Peace Corps and Rotary International established a memorandum of understanding back in 2015? There it is. Can you read it? If you're a lawyer, please don't read it because it's like the most non-committal piece of documentation you've probably ever read. Um, but I, does, I do think that it shows uh, initiative and motivation and curiosity and interest in partnering. And so we have seen, um, you know, some uh, good come out of this MOU already. There is a nonprofit organization established by uh, Rotarians who are also returned Peace Corps volunteers. The nonprofit is called Partnering for Peace. Anyone know who is in the photo there? Vicki, you don't get to say. You, you're a Peace Corps person. Lillian Carter, Jimmy Carter's mom, who was a Peace Corps volunteer in India. In I think that photo was in 1968. So, um, there is a lot of support, a lot of toolkits, a lot of ideas, a lot of stories available at partneringforpeace.org. And I just wanted to highlight a few examples of Rotary and Peace Corps collaboration. So this is Kivan Batten, who was a Peace Corps volunteer in Vanuatu, uh, Pacific Island country uh, from 2017 to 2019. His primary role was teaching English in the schools, but um, he, was introduced to international work through Rotary Youth Exchange. Uh, right after he graduated high school in 2011, he spent a year in Brazil with RYE, learning Portuguese, dancing samba. Um, so that started it all. And then he went on to get his bachelor's in a business related field um, and then joined the Peace Corps. Um, and without that Rotary Youth Exchange experience, I mean, who knows? Um, but that instilled something in Kivan. And so some of the uh, projects he worked on delivering um, English language books to communities for the children to have available. Um, he brought solar to his school through a USAID grant, um, but he's always been a Rotarian and um, has continued that now into establishing, founding a nonprofit, which focuses on 
um, helping underserved uh, youth travel abroad by getting passports and finding those opportunities. And so um, that service is something that is deep within inside Kivan as a Rotarian and as a Peace Corps volunteer. This is Cal Mann in the top right corner who um, had been a Rotarian for 15 years in La Jolla, California. And then he went on to join the Peace Corps as a volunteer in North Macedonia, which borders my host country of Kosovo. Um, and he was in the community economic development sector. And the second day in his, uh, when he got to his site, his second day, he met the charter president of his local Rotary Club in North Macedonia. So he got really lucky there, but they were also really glad that he was there because they were starting their club and it was fresh and it was new. And so he was able to advise them on setting up uh, the Rotary Club in his host community in North Macedonia. And he went on, Cal, to extend for a third year in North Macedonia. You know, the traditional bread and butter program is two years, although we do have short-term assignments available as well. Um, but he stayed on for a third year to help the Peace Corps post establish more intentional relationships with Rotary around North, North Macedonia. I think it just makes a lot of sense when Peace Corps volunteers get to our host countries, many of which Rotary is operating in, to collaborate with Rotarians to implement their projects. There are so many examples, and um, I don't know if this is shared out after, but you can go on the Rotary Service blog and type in the Peace Corps uh, in the search there and find so many examples of uh, Rotary and Peace Corps collaboration um, all over the world in all of those areas of focus, or we call them sectors of public health and education, um, youth development. So uh, I encourage you to just start thinking, um, you know, what are some ways that you might be able to play a part in this? And I have some ideas for you to get you started. I'm a recruiter, so I want you to all join the Peace Corps. How about it? Our oldest volunteer was 87 years old. She was a volunteer in Morocco. So there is no upper age limit to join the Peace Corps. So whether it's you or maybe it's someone you know, I encourage you to serve boldly or encourage someone you know to do so, whether it's through our traditional two-year Peace Corps volunteer program, through our Peace Corps response program. And I'm very happy to give a shout out to Kim Gray in the room. Say hi, Kim, who uh, gave me permission to let you know that she is about to prepare for a Peace Corps response assignment of one year in Kyrgyzstan, and she is going to support ecotourism in Kyrgyzstan. So uh, it's great to have a Rotarian, a Bloomingtonian, And it's great to have you in the Peace Corps family, Kim. Congratulations. Um, those Peace Corps response program, uh, by the way, are very specialized assignments. You have to be very well qualified. So obviously Kim is very well qualified, but you already knew that, I have a feeling. Um, we also have a virtual service option that you can do right here from the United States. It's been a pilot program opened specifically to returned volunteers during the pilot phase but we are about to expand it. And because of our memorandum of understanding with Rotary International, Rotarians are gonna be one of the first groups that this virtual service option is open to. So if you or another Rotarian or someone you know has five to 15 hours per week to dedicate from anywhere from three to six months for a virtual service opportunity, just keep that in mind, keep tabs on the website um, and keep in touch if that's something that you might be interested in. But I also encourage you just to try to connect with volunteers. Um, I think there's a need for better awareness of Rotary in the Peace Corps volunteer community. I mean, obviously Kim knows about it and Cal knew about it and Kivon knew about it, but I didn't know about it. I would have loved to have had a better, better understanding of Rotary and that support from Rotarians, like in a mentorship capacity before departing for my service in Kosovo. So, um, you know, it, we have some send-off parties. We have welcome back parties. We have me, the Indianapolis-based recruiter. We have Vicki Runyon, the Indiana University-based recruiter. 
And we are working with these recruits all day, every day. And so we will do our part to let them know about Rotary and Rotaract, um, but also invite you to come out. Um, and so we can increase awareness of Rotary and the Peace Corps and really the other way around too, just trying to increase the awareness of Peace Corps and the Rotary. Um, there's an opportunity to donate to Peace Corps supported projects through the website, through the Peace Corps Partnership Program. So Kim, that might be something that you keep on your radar. If um, These are usually really small dollar, like a couple thousand dollars, some of them maybe $10,000, um, but basically seed money to implement these community projects. And by working with a Peace Corps volunteer, you know, you have the cultural insight, the language insight, the community connections. And so I think that helps, um, you know, provide assurance that these projects are being implemented in a, a sustainable, thoughtful way. Um, if you have international projects already going on that this club is, in, is involved in, um, let me know. Let me know where you're working. I'd be happy to try to connect you with Peace Corps volunteers or reach out to the Rotary Clubs in those countries to see, um, you know, if it might make sense to work together. Um, I would just say that return Peace Corps volunteers make great Rotarians. So that's also a great like option uh, to increase Rotary membership. Um, what drew me in was the tagline, you know, the motto service above self. I was looking for something Peace Corps-ish to do back here at home. And so the areas of focus, the service component is what really drew me in. And I think it would draw in other return volunteers too, if they knew more about it. Um, we also have a, a career page. So if you are, have jobs available, you can definitely promote those to the return Peace Corps volunteer community. So those are just a few ideas. Um, I wanna let you know that Vicki Runyon is here in the room. Say hi, Vicki. And she is, um, the recruiter specifically for Indiana University Bloomington. So I'm not really, um, you know, here a lot, which is why it's really fun for me to be here today talking to Rotary. Um, but she specifically focuses on IU Bloomington students. And so, um, you know, if you have any ideas for how to loop her in, please keep her in mind. Um, if you've got Rotaract or Interact or any of the youth connections, I'm sure that we'd be happy to, you know, entertain those kind of connections that we might not have already. Um, so just want you to know that we're both here. I also have a very special guest here today. Um, if you want to come up, George. <laughs> um, so we have this really cool initiative. So because we're rebuilding still, we still have 2,400 volunteers, but we'd like it to be up to that 7,000 plus again. Um, we have 14 locally employed staff from Peace Corps posts around the world. George is one of them. She's uh, on temporary assignment based in Chicago. She came down um, to be here with us today. And she's also a Rotarian, a second generation Rotarian in the Philippines. So I'm really excited for her to, to talk to you. Thank you so much, Lindsay. And thank you everyone for having us today. I'm very happy to be joining such a large group of Rotarians. Um, our club is just a small group of 40 and we don't see each other all 40 of us don't see each other as often so i'm happy to see a room filled with rotarians today um i have been so i'll tell you my rotary story first because it's because it blends really nicely to how i got into peace corps as well so our um our club is the rotary club of pasay cyber city under district uh, 3810 in the philippines it was founded in it was established in 2002 and my dad got to be one of the charter members and then became president in 2006 with my mom following in 2009. And I became a Rotarian in 2014, um, quite younger though, but um, I did enjoy the company of, um, of having mentors and people who guided me th throughout my career. So I, I have been a Rotarian for nine years now. I have started counting since you greeted them on their anniversaries. So November 6, 2014 was the day I became a Rotarian. But even before that um, day came, I have always been tagging along um, in the different projects, specifically in the youth projects. And, I, and it has been really a fun um, time getting to know the youth within our areas. And our club is called Cyber City because um, the new territory was um, a reclaimed area within 
the city. So um, they were looking at the nice um, name for it. And so well, how about we call it Cyber City? So Pasay has been um, one of the oldest cities in the Philippines. Then we added Cyber City to add that um, flair. So um, it's been nice. Um, ever since I was young, I was exposed to service. Everything that we do isn't for ourselves, but you also have to think of others first. That's how it is. I mean, we do have a lot of um, donations that we um, receive, and we're also happy to share that we have had sustainable projects that we have been doing on our own as well. My dad was also part of the group study exchange, so he was the Rotarian lead, and he got to connect with one of the clubs in um, North Carolina, specifically in Asheville, and we have formed lifelong times with it lifelong ties with them through glo through global grants as well. So we have partnered with different projects um, from wheelchair distributions to boat distributions to literacy projects. I mean, it's always nice to see kids um, being given the opportunity to pursue more. Since in the Philippines, um, there are still a lack of facilities and it's a really great help to know that all over the world, people come together to support these causes. So um, yeah, um, so for my it, for my service background, ever since I started um, studying, I have wanted to do a job that wasn't a traditional one that would take me to an office eight to five. So I found myself in a USAID funded project. So thank you everyone for your taxes. They have really gone a long, long way. Um, specifically, I have worked on environment projects and one of them would, would be a pilot one where instead of forest rangers, I know in I know the park service here might have better um, strategies to monitor the areas, but in the Philippines, it has always been manual. So through USAID, we have piloted a tablet-based monitoring system for biodiversity and threats management as well. So I had to go up on the mountains, not at my best form though, but I had to help them do that technology. And it was a nice way to be able to meet um, people um, in Uplands. And in another project, I got to work with fisher folks for sustainable fishing. So it was a lot of connections um, that, that I made. And in every area, there would be a rotary club, whether it would be like a bigger one or a smaller one. But it's always a nice way to feel comfortable in an area wherever I'm based. So I live in the capital, but given my job in Peace Corps and USAID, I have been around the country. And it's always comforting to know that you see a rotary sign there, you know there's a club, there might be a meeting, you just drop by and you instantly feel at home and you don't feel so afraid being in a new area. Um, so my Peace Corps journey started. Um, so for the past few years in USAID, I have been the one at the forefront doing the trainings. But when this opportunity to join Peace Corps came, they told me, would it be okay for you not to be the one to do the work? but rather to facilitate the connections between the offices where the Peace Corps volunteers would be working, checking the communities and also the host families who they will be working with. So it's essentially a step back, but also for me, a very big step forward in terms of the career because it gave me a bigger perspective of the world. Every year I welcome volunteers. So I haven't been a volunteer. I'm not qualified to be a volunteer, but I am proud to have worked with a few volunteers since um, 2018 that I joined Peace Corps. And people may say, I've done two years here, but I don't think I've made any difference. But trust me, we, the staff who are left in the Philippines, who are there, are the ones who see the work that you all do. It's not just the Peace Corps volunteers, but they embody the Americans, the American culture, and they bring each and every part of you when they get to the countries. This is the job. So that the old tagline was the toughest job that you'll ever love. The millennials now don't want the tough part. So we have to change it a bit. That's why it's, ser it's served boldly. <laughs> but um, it's been a nice opportunity to um, redefine success. Since um, success here might mean metrics, numbers, big ticket projects, big libraries, roads, housing. But in the Philippines, specifically in the sector that I work in, so I work in the youth sector, it's redefining success. It's talking to an out-of-school youth and hearing him for the first time, having hopes and dreams. It's having a timid child get up to you and talk to you and open up. 
those are the small wins that we look up that we look up to and also what i love about peace corps volunteers and new faces especially with with the youth is that they open up more to a mentor to a friend rather than probably a social worker or a service provider that they always see so the two years of service that um, the peace corps volunteers devote can change lives can be life-changing for themselves as well so i'm happy to be able to join you all today i'm happy to experience cultural exchange and to meet new friends and retirants as well so thank you lindsay As someone who married a host country national from her host country, I agree about changing the lives of the volunteers as well. And I take exemption to your millennial comment, but moving on, um, that's all for me. This is my contact information. Please keep in touch. Um, you know, if you want to keep abreast of Peace Corps activities here in Bloomington um, or in Indiana in general, please come out to our events and, and network and fellowship with us. I'm happy to take any questions. Well, I'm going to ask, and by the way, we can see the passion that both Lindsay and George have for the Peace Corps. And, and again, Kim, you know, safe travels and appreciate your dedication to, to this. Um, a donation will be made to Big Brothers and Big Sisters uh, in honor of your presentation today. So we thank you for that. I, I've asked George and Lindsay to stay afterwards for questions because it was important to hear what George had to say. And again, it's also important to get you out of here by, by one o'clock. I, I want to... Uh, uh, acknowledge the people that made this program today work so well. Judy Witt was our greeter. Kyla Cox Eckert was our um, introducer. Our Zoom host, Joy Harder. Reflection, David Wright. Our reporter today, Aaron Brewington. And Michael Shermus was our camera mic operator. Um, he didn't get a lot of work in, but uh, we'll get him another year, another time. And obviously, Tyler Martin Nichols. Uh, Tyler, you do great work as our audio and Zoom producer. Next week's program will be in the Georgian room. It'll be Pablo Frentes speaking on creating connections and community in a new place. So come to the Georgian room next week. Please uh, join me at this point in our stand for our four-way test of the things we say, think, say, or do. First, is it the truth? Second, is it beneficial to all concerned? Third, is it fair to all friendships? The earth will build good concerns. And fifth, is it fun?